What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a quick review of the brand new Falcon Wild Peak AT4Ws. This is going to be a 6,000 mile review. So over the last 6,000 miles, I have taken these tires through four states. I have been up mountains, I've been through deserts, I have crawled rocks, I have done a fair bit of city and highway driving. I have used them in snow, rain, sand, and mud. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my experience with these tires thus far. And we are also going to see if they wear as good as Falcon claims they do. Let's start off first by measuring the tread depth with this digital device. We're going to see what the tread depth is. These tires have a 60,000 mile warranty. So we're going to see if the tread depth compared to the 6,000 miles of wear will give us that 60,000 mile warranty. All right, so here we are on the front outside tire. I'm expecting this to have a lot more wear because I do not have a sway bar and this vehicle does have full-time four-wheel drive. So we're getting a reading of about 0.369 here. I have not rotated these tires either yet. I should probably do that. All right, here we are measuring the inside of the front tire and we're getting a reading of 0.365. All right, so moving to the back tire here on the outside. Looks like we're getting a reading of 0.38. So less wear on the back tires. We'll go to the inside of that back tire and we're getting a reading of 0.397. So that's pretty good. All right, so as I mentioned before, these tires have a 60,000 mile tread life warranty on them, which is much better than the AT3Ws. They do come with a tread depth of 1430 seconds brand new and they are currently sitting somewhere between 12 and 1330 seconds. So with that measurement, if you look at 60,000 miles of wear, they will get to the 60,000 mile mark at about 230 seconds tread depth. You would not want to exceed that and typically you want to replace your tire at about 430 seconds tread depth. Um, you would not want to go any lower than that. If you got an accident and you were at 230 seconds tread depth, uh, you may be held liable for that accident. So definitely good to replace your tires at about 430 seconds. And especially if you're doing overlanding or off-roading, you want to have more tread depth for that traction off-road. So, so I think realistically, I would get about 50,000 miles out of these things, judging by how they've worn so far before I'd actually replace them. So I don't think it'll actually meet that 60,000 mile mark. All right, so where do these tires perform well? I just got back from Utah and in Utah we did a whole bunch of different terrain. Um, we were driving in shale rock, we were driving in some mud, doing some rock crawling, we went up to top of the world trail, we did a whole bunch of different trails there. Um, and we were aired down at times to about 18 to 20 PSI. This vehicle is super overloaded when we do those trips. I have sliders on here, I have armor underneath, I have skid plates, a steel front bumper, a rear metal bumper on the back with a tire carrier carrying fuel water a drawer box in the back i have a 200 pound rooftop tent so you know these tires actually performed really well given the fact that they had all that weight on them they were aired down to 20 psi and we were crawling up rocks i didn't have any issues with them they gripped fantastically one of the things i did notice was they caked up with mud if you've been to utah you know even mud terrain tires cake up with mud there so i don't know if it's the actual tires themselves but mind you when we did get on dry surface it that mud was instantly ejected from the treads so that's one of the things i noticed you know maybe where it didn't perform well but overall you know the tires were great all right so where i think these tires perform incredibly well for an all-terrain tire is in the rain i live on the west coast we get a lot of rain here and it's really important for me to have a tire that performs well in the rain. These tires, no issues. I cannot get them to break grip around corners, accelerating, braking. They're just incredible. The KO2s were not good for me. No offense to anybody that's running the KO2s, but for anybody that's living on the West Coast, I would, wouldn't run those tires. They just slide all over the place. They're really just truly pathetic in the rain. But these ones are absolutely incredible. So they're a really good all around tire for me because they do perform well in the rain and the dirt and the snow kind of let's actually talk about snow so when i first reviewed these tires when i first put them on i took them out for a test drive i, I recorded it all i they weren't gripping that well and i thought it was just because of the snow that day but i did get to test them out a little bit more in some more snow and i can say that i think that the at3ws actually performed better than these tires in the snow they did change the tread compound on these they do have a much longer tread life so i think that they've made a made it a harder compound and because of that they just don't perform as well in the cold or in the snow so 
that's one of the things I noticed. Not to say that they don't that they perform terrible in the snow. I think they still perform really well for an all-terrain tire in the snow. Just maybe not quite as good as the AT3W. So handling on the road, I would say these tires perform really well. Um, they are advertised as having a better or smoother ride, and I would say that they do. They seem to somehow be softer on the road, but they do have a longer tread life. So I'm not too sure how they've managed to do that. Um, noise wise, I haven't noticed any increase in noise over the AT3Ws. I'd say it's on par with, you know, the KO2s, um, the Toyo Open Country AT3s. They're all about at the same noise level for, you know, on the highway and highway driving. So another area or a weakness I would say for these tires, I don't know if it's a weakness because they're, they're great tires or strong tires, but the fuel economy, they are a heavier tire. They've gotten heavier since the AT3W. I know the KO3s just came out and they've also gotten heavier. And I think they extended their tread life warranty as well on those. I think they're 50,000 miles, um, but the, so these tires are pretty heavy. I think they weigh in somewhere around 53.4 pounds for a 285 7017 SL tire. Um, the lightest KO3 that just came out, I think it is the same load range. Don't quote me on that, but it is like 57 pounds. So that's the lightest KO3 you can get in a 285 7017 currently. Um, so they actually are heavier than these tires. These tires do not have a three ply sidewall like the KO3s. So maybe that's why these are able to be a little bit lighter and their, their lightest um, load range. But you know, like I said before, I aired them down in Utah and we took them through all that crazy terrain and I never had any sidewall issues with these. We were rubbing up against rocks, I actually damaged my rims quite a bit, just going up against sharp rocks, grinding right into the wheel. Um, but the tires took all the abuse, no problem. So I'm not too concerned about having a three ply sidewall. As you do go into the heavier tires though for the Wild Peaks and the AT4Ws, as you get, um, the load range goes up and the ply goes to three. These do get much heavier. So expect to have a much heavier tire. Probably, I think it's even heavier than the KO3s in that same load range when these go to a three ply. So I'll just talk about price point. These tires were pretty darn expensive. They've gotten more expensive since the AT3Ws. But you know, you look at the KO3s that just came out, they're super expensive too. Inflation has happened, everything's gone up. So, but you know, you get what you pay for. I'm really happy with these tires. So far I've taken them through all kinds of terrain. I haven't had any flats, any issues. They seem to be very well built and they seem to take a lot of abuse. So overall, I'd say I'm definitely happy with these tires. Um, you get what you pay for, you know, um, for an all-terrain tire, I think they kind of tick off all the boxes. Some people might say, oh, you know, my tires, blah, 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 all-terrain would tear those apart, uh, you know, off-road or in the mud or whatever. But, you know, then you could kind of say to those people, well, how are they in the rain? Are they good in the rain? How are they in the snow? For me personally, I do a lot of highway driving to get to the destinations I go to. Sometimes it's like, I'll go on a trip and it's like 5,000 miles of driving. And a lot of it's highway driving through rain, through snow. So it's really important that I have a tire that kind of ticks off all the boxes. This is an Overland rig. Um, they have a really good tread life warranty. I think they'll reach 50,000 miles easily. So I think that concludes the video today. It's just a short one. Just wanted to give a quick review on these tires. I am impressed with them. If you guys found the content useful today, please like and subscribe. I hope to come up with a lot more videos and I always appreciate your guys' support. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye now.